Welcome to Warmaster Podcast. A couple of unboxings I've got to do today because I'm using the stuff tomorrow. So, first one, I'm playing a, a Song of Fire and Ice, a tournament tomorrow, four rounds, 30 points. Um, I've had to buy some models in order to, um, to play in the tournament because there's no proxies. Um, so I've got a couple of boxes here. There's one still in the post, which hopefully will arrive before tomorrow or there will be proxies. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're looking at uh, Build a Crossbowman. Which are a seven point unit um, in the game. Your standard point game is third uh, is forty points. So seven points is quite a big chunk of your army, and they need a three point attachment to get maximum effectiveness. So you're actually spending ten points on, on this unit. You get twelve miniatures in it. Um, Night's Watch starter set. It says it requires. I've obviously got three of those because they were so cheap. Um, I mean, you could get them for thirty five pounds, which is about the price of one of these boxes. Uh, and you get obviously four units so I'll I'll open one of those um, at some point on camera but I, I don't need to do it before tomorrow so I'm not going to do it today anyway build a crossbowman we'll open it up we'll see what we get in the box well we kind of know what we get in the box we get uh, people love hearing the um, wrap of cellophane being torn open so let's see what we get put that away you get your base one of the interesting things about this game is everything is on the same kind of base. All infantry come on this uh, 4x3 base. Um, makes everything look a bit blocky and a bit regimented. It's a, it's a strange concept. But when you get used to it, it's all right. It's all right. It kind of it feels a bit like they're chess pieces in a way, bizarrely. Um, what have we got here? A card that's out of date. So especially when you get the Heroes boxes, you get lots of cards in, quite a lot of the value of the um, package was uh, the fact you get all these cards, but all the cards are out of date. And um, they've actually stopped producing card packs now in the much the same way as um, War Machine did, because by the time, I mean, I had to get them imported, my card packs, I couldn't find them in the UK. So I had to pay to import them. And then by the time you get them, even though they're labeled 2021, they're still not available in the UK in the whole, and they're out of date. So kind of printing cards is a mugs game so they're stopping doing that so fair play to them that's probably the right move you can print them they, they, they don't hide the files from you you can print them at home if you've got the ability to do so or you'll be able to pay to have them printed but print on demand but i think the print on demand is going to be based in america which isn't ideal but i guess we can club together and get it done so we're going to rely on the auto focusing. So hopefully that's going to work. Otherwise, I'll have to go in and change the settings. So on the plus side, that will now at least let us see the miniatures properly. So there are four individual miniatures, roughly about 30 mil. Um, and um, you get three copies of each miniature. In, in the old Steamforge games, Guild Balls set up, they come completely pre-assembled. Though you might find some mould lines on them or little bits that need cleaning up like on this bow here. Um, but you can literally take them out of the clamshell and play with them. Um, I think they're different coloured plastic so that helps with identifications in the different factions. That's another cool thing. So you can literally, if you're in a gaming store, you can just buy a box of these off the shelf and just get playing. Which is cool. Removes one of the major barriers to um, gaming. Like um, I'm building some um, Warlord plastics at the moment for Pike and Shot. And they take for bloody ever to build. Uh, and the the droids in Star Wars Legion, holy moly. The IG-100s that I'm building. Oh my god. They're, they might even be worse than the droid ecos, but we will see when I finally get round to building six of them. You'd think I was building 600 with how long it was taking. But anyway, back to a um, game of Song of Fire and Ice and Thrones. This is model two. I'm going to be going for a very dark colour scheme on these because they are Night's Watch. So, I mean, they, they, they'll be mostly dressed in black. And then we'll put some kind of dark, um, dark wood for the bows and maybe use some metallics here, the banding on the bows. But another cool miniature. We've got this guy here. Lots of beards. Very manly, manly men. These are Night's Watch. Lots of beards. And then the final guy. This guy here. 
So even if you pay full price, I think it's $35, which with Brexit and all the other shenaniganry actually converts to £35, which doesn't sound great. <laughs> but, I mean, people are paying even more than that because um, my Night's Watch 2 Hero box, I've had uh, Paul's buying it. It's costing £42, unbelievably, to import from the US of A. Oh, my God. That's nearly double what it would be in the UK. But it is what it is. What a mad world we live in. Um, anyway, so this was the first. Uh, this was the Builder Crossbowman. Um, let's have a look at the card here. Not that it's in date. See if anything's changed. Uh, they've got Sundering. They've got Long Range. They've got this Ready Aim Fire. That's still the same. Three, seven. I don't know what the bloody melee. If you're using melee, you're already in trouble. I think they might have five of armor rather than six of armor. I'd be surprised if there's seven morale because Night's Watch are normally about five morale. So those two look like they've changed. And how many points are they? Seven, still seven points. So, but that's the old card, so let's not worry about that. Okay, so that was um, episode one. Episode two, we're going to be opening Night's Watch Heroes uh, box one in a second.